Hello, hello, and welcome back to the Rift Guides Wild Rift video. For today, we're going to take a look at the newly released champion Kindred. And after watching this video, you'll know everything you have to about this champion. From how do the marks spawn, what do the marks do, and everything you need to know to properly pilot this champion and understand everything there is to know. Not only this, at the end of this video, I'll attach multiple jungle clears, which I'll turn into shorts later, that you can just take a look at and be like, okay, this is an option. Obviously, they are not optimized. They are just like a rough idea what you can do. And you can use this to win your games more easily. Anyway, let's start with the ability rundown. First off, we have the passive Mark of the Kindred. Marks targets with Mark of the Kindred for hunting. These additional 30% damage to small monsters, red bramblebacks, and blue sentinels that are marked, at least not the big ones. There are different ways to mark a target. The auto refresh one, the passive one. Every 30 seconds, the mark on a monster expires and a new one is automatically applied. Marks on monsters are highlighted on the minimap. The second part is the active part. Tap the mark button above your spells to mark an enemy champion. Scoring a takedown against a hunter target grants a mark of the kindred stack that empowers kindred. First three stacks gained grant 75 range, and every three stacks gained subsequently grant 25 extra attack range. Mark of the Kindred also empowers abilities and grants them the following effects. Dance of Arrows. The number you see here is the total number you've already gained. Like, if I have zero marks, it's a bonus 0% attack speed. And for every mark I gain, you gain 5% bonus attack speed. So in this case, gain 5% mark for every Kindred stack you have. For Wolf's Frenzy, the same also applies. You gain 1% bonus damage of enemy's current health per Kindred mark stack. For Mounting Dread, the same applies as well. You gain 1% bonus damage equal to plus 1% of the um, enemy's missing HP per Kindred mark stack. So now let's talk about abilities. Let me give myself a few levels. Okay. First off, we have Dance of Arrows. Rolls in a target direction and fires an arrow at up to three enemies, dealing 65 damage, 65 plus 70% AE of your bonus AD, and you gain attack speed. In this case, it's 35% attack speed plus 5% per mark of the Kindred for 4 seconds. While in Wolf's Frenzy, your second ability, this ability's cooldown is reduced to 2 seconds. So let's take a look. So this ability lets you jump. Uh, let me give myself 0% cooldown so I can show you something, because this ability allows you to go over walls, which allows you to basically be in a little goblin, just permanently invading, as you see. Really annoying to deal with. And yeah, now let's go back. For the second ability, we have Wolf's Frenzy. Passive gain Hunter's Vigor stacks, and when moving and attacking... <clears throat> Passive gains Hunter's Vigor stacks when moving or attacking, similar to how Energized Passive works. After gaining 100 stacks, Kindred's next attack restores health. This is the total amount it restores right now. Since I'm at full life, it doesn't heal me any for anything, but it's scaling with your missing HP and level. The active part is claiming an area as territory and directs Wolf to maul the last target that the Lamp has attacked. Wolf's Mauling deals magic damage equal to 25, which is the base damage which scales with level, 20% bonus AD, and 20% AP plus 1.5% plus 1% per Kindred Mark stack of the card target's current HP. Wolf deals 100% damage to marked monsters and other surrounding monsters as well, slowing them by 50% on top. Health Restored is the greatest when below 30% health and deals up to 300 damage to monsters. So, this passive basically functions like a Blade of the Rune King. You get stacks, you deal higher percentage current HP damage, and your wolf is literally gonna tear them apart. Not only this, it has a nice interaction, so if you see, I'm gonna give myself a... Uh, you see, 9 second cooldown, now I'm gonna refresh this, now I'm gonna put a point into this, I'm gonna jump, and I can just pop my second ability and lower the cooldown of my first ability, and just jump. You see? It's quite a nice thing. And it obviously transitions as you should. Coming back to the mark logic, how do the marks function? So let's just, before we hop over to the third ability, let's talk about how marks function. Okay, we have the current marks. Okay, you see here I can mark somebody, the misfortune. Then I can mark her, she gets uh, shown onto the minimap for a brief moment, I get vision of her. It's free vision basically. So you can abuse this to see an enemy champion. Now for the Kindred Mark logic, there's a sneaky little thing. Okay, first off, the first mark that's gonna appear on the map is total RNG. It is one or the other crab. So this crab, let me turn off Fork of War so you can see it. So it's gonna be this crab or the other crab. 
Okay, what happens if you have one stack? If you have one stack, it can happen again that the scuttle crab can be marked, but the next camps that can be marked will be the raptors or the gromp. The next camps after this are going to be crooks when it's four to seven marks, red buff, wolves or blue buff. After this, when we go towards eight plus marks, we have herald or baron or dragons. This applies to elemental dragons and obviously elder dragons. So how does this mark logic function? Okay, let's say you clear this one the first time. You get one stack. Now the enemy camps can be marked. The enemy jungle cleared from crux to the bottom side of the map. So the next respawning camp that is going to come up is going to be the chicken camp. So as long as only the chicken camp is going to be available and no other crab, and not Gromp, at the same time as your passive Mark Coulon comes up again, it will automatically mark the chickens for you. If only the Gromp is available, it will automatically mark the Gromp for you. Let's see if we can actually manipulate this to be the case. So, uh, let me give myself zero cooldown. Let me smite this. And now I will make sure to kill this. And now it should mark either this crab or this gromp. There's no other way around this. So let's wait these 30 seconds until it's marked. Should happen, I think, any second. So we just need to sit back and wait. <clears throat> and if you just take a look, ah, and the gromp is marked. Okay, cool. So with the gromp being marked, so we will just kill this. Now we'll make sure to uh, respawn camps for a second, respawn monsters. The wolf camp will spawn, we will kill this. And now with the mark logic at play, like in place, it can only mark these here. This isn't available. So, wait, well it can also mark, let, let me remove the scuttle crap here for a second so it doesn't, it doesn't mess around, you know? <clears throat> So this one will automatically spawn onto the chicken camp because the grump isn't available to be marked and there's no scuttle crap. So the next mark will be settled on this lovely chicken camp if it follows the logic that I previously told you about. So if you know how an enemy jungler has cleared and which camp comes up next or which camp is available, you will always know where the mark is going to go. That way you can manipulate everything you need if you play close attention, you see, the crab was here. Crab has respawned, so the crab mark has been placed. So what can we do after killing the crab? Which is the next mark after the crab? It's going to be croc, red, wolves, or blue. Um. So, let's just quickly kill blue and wolves to follow the logic. So it should automatically spawn on either red buff or crocs but it doesn't because i have free never mind i'm stupid <laughs> i messed up my own logic because i only had free good one good one crooks you're you're the best i can't count i can't even read anyways now we'll uh we'll write this off as an accident at work do i have to actually kill no i don't have to so now we have four. I will quickly uh, respawn monsters so they don't troll me. So I'll just quickly smite them away. So we don't get trolled. And it would have been the wolf camp. We were too fast. We need to do it again. No, we, need to, we don't need to. It will automatically spawn now. Okay. So by the logic, it could have only spawned on wolves, red, and crux, and it did spawn on wolves. Now it can only spawn on red buff and crux. We just take the accident where I didn't count that I had uh, three marks instead of four. Uh, we, we, we just put it into the past, it doesn't matter. But now you'll see that the mark will either spawn on red buff or crux. There we go, we have the red buff spawn. Okay. Um, 
with the with the timer at hand, since we have six stacks now, the six the seventh stack will 100 percent if I'm not mistaken, if any of these camps respawn, it's gonna be my mistake, but the next mark is going to appear here. 100 percent Unless blue or wolves respawn or check uh, or red buff, which they can't, unless I've mistimed something. So the next mark is going to be on this camp here. And after this. Mark is here. Hello. And now I think with seven, I think I don't I don't 100%. It should only be dragons and Harold now. Okay. So this is then how the mark logic works. And I hope like it helped you out because I I'm not 100% certain about the sevens to eight. I think. Mm, I think no, it's it's still like no, it's it should still spawn like the next mark should be spawning on wolves. Wolf camp is gonna respawn, and it's gonna be the wolf camp. Now it should be the wolf camp. The moment the wolf camp respawns, it will be instantly marked. And I can collect this. Come on, wolf camp, respawn, brother. Uh, if the blue buff spawns too fast, it might mark the blue buff. If And there we go, it spawns. And the mark is on the wolves. Ladies and gentlemen, kindred mark logic. Okay, now the next mark is going to be a 50-50. The next mark is going to be between red buff and it's going to be between baron and red buff. Uh, baron, sorry, baron and dragon. I'm stupid. Stupid. Anyway. Okay, you will have dragon or baron being marked. So sit back, wait, and relax. Ah, waiting for the mark to spawn. Amazing. How's, how, how was your day, by the way? And how are you experiences with the Kindred? And it's going to be the Baron. Nice. Okay, with this done, we will now move over to the last abilities we have in our at our disposal. Okay, we have our third ability. Let's read it first. Mounting Dread slows an enemy by 50% for one second. Kindred's third attack within four seconds of attacking an enemy directs Wolf to pounce on the target, dealing physical damage equal to 80 plus 70% of the physical damage of the bonus that you have, plus 8 plus 1 per mark of the Kindred track count of the enemy's target's missing HP value. If the target is below 25%, this ability will deal execute bonus damage. The flat part of this spell's damage will not be increased, it's still the same, 80, uh, scaling with level, plus 70 of the bonus attack, but the uh, other scaling, like the missing HP count, is going to increase from 8 to 12, and the value per mark goes, down, goes up from 1% to 1.5 per target. Plus, the execute threshold increases with the more crit you have. So it's 25% plus 40% of your crit. These are to 300 damage to monsters. And if you level up, you gain cooldown and more damage. So, how does it look? Boom. Your Q does not apply a stack, so keep that in mind. Now for the last combo, like the only most important spell combo we have on, on Kindred, we, we talk about Lamb's Respet. Lamp blasts the ground under herself for 3 seconds, creating a zone where all units within cannot be killed. When units inside the zone fall below or to 10%, they become invulnerable to damage for as long as they stay inside the zone, during which they cannot be healed. So if you're a Soraka and you support champion that heals, do not heal champions or attempt to heal champions with cooldowns once they're at this threshold HP because it will not work. Rather wait until it times out, because when it times out, all the units inside will be healed for 200, you see the scaling in the bottom right. And Kindred herself, or themselves, because it's two entities, will be healed for an additional amount. This ability does not take effect against structures, so structures don't die. So let me just quickly show you how it works. Come on, hit me, hit me. I can't die. And everything is fine. So what do I do? to use this little trick in a combo. So let me quickly get the enemy bot here. Come here, Miss Watching, and I'm gonna show you the trick. Now let's disable the bot. Okay. 
First up, I'm gonna hit it a few times. Everything is fine. Okay. Now, the, the most important combo on Kindred is, when you pop ult, you place this on an enemy, and then you wait until the zone ends, and then you trigger it. So, okay, pop this. She cannot die right now, so you wait until it times out, and then you hit her with it. Because then the bonus damage always applies. So again, auto attack. Now, this would be terrible, right? Like, if you, if you do this, this would be... Oh, well, I messed up. Wait, she's actually in... Hitbox? Interesting hitboxes. But it tells you if you're inside. Anyways, back to the topic. Let me do damage to that lady again. Okay. You pop your ultimate, you apply your E, you hit it twice, then it times out, and then you proc it. Because if you have items, you see you have no items, the person will be instantly dead. And now we have to talk about runes and items. First off, there are multiple setups you can go for. Um, I here went for the Kraken, Brutal, Giant Slayer, Alacrity, and Sudden Impact setup. Because Sudden Impact will allow you, since you're constantly jumping, you see, constantly jumping, to always have this pen, which will enable you to technically go with, um, where is it? Yumus Ghost Blade. Because the item number one grants you very high AD, plus bonus armor pen. So with this, you have 15 plus 13 armor pen. Pretty high, and the magic pen will also be used since you're using, uh, since you're dealing magic damage on your second ability as well. The bonus attack speed is also quite nice, and the bonus movement speed is very nice when it comes about remove, uh, like moving around the map. The next thing we need to talk about is another starter item, which is going to be very powerful with the recent buffs. We have a Storm Razor Crit Kindred build. This will allow us to slow down the enemy and run them down, while also scaling heavily into crit. It is also, however, the squeezer approach. The alternative you have is a Trinity Force Rush. Trinity Force will grant you more brawling power with the HP, decent amount of AD, decent amount of attack speed and ability ace, plus the bonus movement speed, as well as the Valor passive and the Spellbait passive. Because think about this again. So, I turn this off again. I jump. I pop my second ability. As you see, I'll have Spellbait every single time I jump. So this will be very powerful in the early game at chasing down people. So... To make sure um, we see like a completed build. So, first off, let's go with boots. I think you are fine with attack speed boots. Very powerful on your champion, regardless of anything. Uh, it will grant you even more attack speed. You are like giga crazy with this. Alternatively, if you want some more sustain and do not want to build, um, either have Bloodline or Bloodthirst, you can go for Gluttonous, but I think these will be the meta boots. In the late game, you can change it to defensive boots if you want to, but it's going to be fine. If you run the Sudden Impact setup, you will go with Yumus Ghostblade as your first item, and then afterwards, you'll probably go into Trinity Force. So you'll have low vamp, which is probably the biggest issue here. Let me give myself some gold. So we're all happy. Okay, then we have Yumus Ghost, like, then we have this. And now after this, you basically pick up whatever you need. Uh, you can go into a more tanky approach and look for what the best options are. But I think at this point, you probably need some sustain, which is going to be Bloodthirster. And now you need any items that fulfill any need you have as a champion. Uh, a more cookie cutter build for a core build is going to be Storm Razor into BT. You have the slow, you have crit scaling, and you're very happy about what you're doing, basically. Um, this one is a little bit more risky, but it snowballs probably very hard since you're curving crit very early into your build, making you scale brutally fast, but with the risk. Uh, the most consistent approach could potentially be Trinity Force into Bloodthirster. You are tanky and have sustain. And then afterwards, you can choose what you want to build into. Um, with the meta being very tanky, you can take a look at Blade of the Rune King. You can, just to have it for more mobility and extra damage. But you can also look at other Bruiser items. You're not necessarily dependent on going full crit. You can really look into like weird itemization. Uh, Kindred will gain more than 60 AD from this item in late game on full level. So you can even look into an, an item build like, I don't know, you can have something really stupid like like this, for example. It looks very weird, but the, the, the benefit of this would be gaining a lot of health. 
and you have very high AD. And if you have a lot of marks, you'll attack fast anyway, so just take take a look at how fast you'll attack. Just look. And you will have this all the time, like you see. Like and you'll still deal a metric ton of damage, like you see. It's it's definitely not a bad choice, and cleaver generally is not a bad item. But if you do not like this, you can look at other options. You can go for a crit, like a full crit build, like an absolute maniac build, like something like this. And then you have, um, where's this item? The magnetic blaster. But the question is, like, you have nearly half your own HP bar only, like you have half your HP bar. So the question is, do you really want to have that one? That's something you just have to debate, like, internally, if, if it's, like, a good choice. Uh, but I think the, the only important part, the most important part about Kindred in this meta, and generally about gameplay, are going to be these two items. You'll have Trinity Force and, bl uh, and Bloodthirst, and these will be the most important items you can have on this champion. After this, uh, when it comes to enchantments, you'll most of the time just have this. So you can always... Ah, oh, I get CC'd. This. Because if you go for a full squishy build, you just need to make sure you can always press ult because if the enemy full all ins you and you have like these 2.5 seconds, right? No, 3 seconds, sorry, you have 3 seconds. And then how much damage can you do in 3 seconds? Let's just, let's just imagine uh, your full build. Uh, let me go with this, let me go with this and let me just pick up this for the funsies. Okay, now I put my cooldowns back. Okay, now look at how much damage I can deal. Like, do you see? I just dealt so much damage to this thing. Obviously, since I deal a lot of current HP damage, it's a little, a little bit of uh, messed up. But still, I dealt so much damage simply because I was able to just instantly pop this, turn around, and deal damage. So, if the enemy jumps you and you instantly react with QSS into ult, you can get them low enough. And then afterwards, once you get out of your ult, you have enough damage to at least take one with you, or maybe even two. This is always something you have to keep in mind. And yeah, I think that concludes today's video. I think this might be a lot of help to a lot of people. I hope it was really nice. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. If you get confused with any of the mark logic, I'll repeat it again. Zero marks, Scuttlecrab. One to three, Scuttlecrab, Raptors, or Grom. Four to seven, Crux, Red, Wolves, or Blue. And eight plus, Harold, Baron, or Dragon. And with that, we're at the end of this video. Thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and see you soon for more Rift Cats content.